the Education Lounge podcast. Joining us today is Georgia. So she's one Hello. of our tutors, um, but she's got a bit of an insight into AI. So it'd be interesting to sort of hear her views. Definitely an interest. Yeah. Yeah. Not sure what, what insight I have, but we'll see. <laughs> so obviously we're talking about AI. Mm. What do you think it is? Like, because yeah. yeah. obviously we're not like experts in, like, yeah. in really like in detail about how it works, but we do kind of know a little bit. So, so this there's there's this idea of narrow artificial intelligence and general artist artificial intelligence. And I suppose like what we mean nowadays is more the general type of intelligence. But for a long, long time, we've been uh, basically getting inputs and performing some function on those inputs and getting outputs. So that's basically what a narrow artificial intelligence is able to do. It's able to take a task that a human does and then do something with that task, some calculation, perform a calculation and generate an output, which we've been doing for a long time since we've started sort of creating computers, even... Mm, even like calculators. Yeah, in the like 19th century, we were able to do that. Um, not to a very high level and it didn't really look anything like modern day computing but essentially it's the same thing mm -hmm. um, but now when we talk about in artificial intelligence we generally mean uh, general AI that's able to take various tasks or various types of inputs and they generate a more sophisticated output um, to the level that a human might be able to do it. Sometimes slightly below, sometimes slightly above. Yeah, I think it depends on depends, the task. Depends on the human as well. Mm. The human. <laughs> <laughs> That's effectively what AI is. Obviously, then it gets very, very complicated because once you delve more into the history of AI, you discover that there's a lot of different theories of how it should work and what intelligence actually is. I think until sort of actually relatively recently we've been quite reliant on calculating so just computers being able to perform calculations mm -hmm. us coding in algorithms to figure out um to do a task quicker than a human but then not that i think it was not that long ago actually um obviously computing power has got so exponentially it's no longer, it's, yeah it's no longer constrained so I think that's why we're seeing a lot of the developments in AI because I think it was a commun it was, an, it, it was a processing power problem. Was, do you have enough processing power to actually take loads of enough data in? Because I mean, it's amazing like what the human brain does. Like we take in so much, so much data every second, but we we're barely aware of it. Now, when we take in that data through evolution and stuff like that we're able to our brain is developed to understand what and interpret what's entering our eyes so it can filter things well um and i think part of ai research is working out what data is relevant and what to churn out and that's an amazingly difficult thing to do and i think it's still the problem still the problem that people are trying to solve is like what data is irrelevant like whenever i've talked to friends who work in the field so like russell and it's always about like we've got a lot of access to data but how like how do you select what's important like because because they they say okay we can very easily like machine learning and stuff like that makes to them it's not the difficult part the difficult part is actually deciding what data what's useful what's meaningful mm. yeah yeah to the problem that you're trying to solve so a general way ai would have to contend with that it's got a like no matter what the input is and what data set it's drawing from it's got to interpret what's relevant to the problem that it's trying to solve yeah and i guess that's mm. the difference between an input output yeah and AI. and that's something that like humans can do well you, most humans can do relatively easily is that they can decide what's 
important what's not important better than most computers <laughs> but yeah well yeah I, I think there's like a, a scale though because it depends on the human it depends on on the ai tool that you use i think i don't know if it's true or not i think current ai i've heard has like a the intelligence of a is an eight-year-old mm. is that right i'd say it depends what you're measuring intelligence i on. think they were measuring it on chat gpt yeah but like Obviously what test knowledge, did they give i can't remember it was a passing it, thing that i yeah. watched yeah i think in terms of like information held by the ai it's got to be a million times more yeah. than an eight-year-old has in their brain but but intelligence wise with it? yeah rather than the like knowledge yeah yeah the, the way that it can interpret and mm. figure out yeah like, to get to an answer yeah i think as ai develops we're gonna see what it struggles with more and what skills it kind of picks up easily and those things that um ai finds more difficult will be almost like what we learn about humans is more valuable like things like reading between the lines and you know the inference yeah like you know like the tests they give you to like make sure you're a human like those are getting more and more complicated as um you know ai develops but they're becoming more and more to do with like inferring and like reading between the lines and um i think that will be as the kind of race continues between ai getting better and better at what it does and humans just reacting to that and understanding you know what it is that we have um in terms of skills those yeah subtle reading between the lines type skills um will be the ones that we will realize are, are really valuable and unique to humans i don't think we're that far off that yeah i can see it now already in a way um, next, next even like next five years or so we're it's, yeah. it's, it's developing at a very scary rate. I know plenty of people who have problem with in, inference skills. Like, yeah, that's, <laughs> what, to be honest, was, that's the that's yeah. the thing. Because I, I I think it's more like you a little change in intelligence actually makes a massive that the scary that that's kind of the the interesting part is if you if you think about it if you get someone with a an IQ of one hundred and twenty. Mm. And then you compare them to someone with an IQ of 100. Hmm. There's like a massive, massive difference in hmm. what they're able to do, hmm. like ultimately, and what they're able to learn. Um, if you just take a little bit of a difference, so imagine a computer that has an IQ of like 180. That's actually way, way, way more intelligence than any human probably alive. Yeah. Right. And that computers going to be able to do mm. you know replace it, anyone yeah. in any yeah. task it's kind of scary yeah, the better and better it gets at you know replicating what it has in front of it um you won't be able to have a human that outsmarts an ai because if an ai can just replicate whatever it sees then it'll just replicate that human mm. like if it's just constantly keeping up um or surpassing whatever we'll we can do yeah then that's that's what it will be but, but i think the the the, um, the test is that is how well it can generate knowledge which yeah. generate new knowledge yeah so like given i'll give you an example if you have let's just take really basic example like a an ape and a human right that the ape can only really copy what the human does mm. right? and they're not that like if you think iq wise they're not a hell of a lot of difference between an ape and a human yet yeah, there's a massive difference in terms of what they can do yeah and if you take an ai that's like just twice as intelligent as us mm. that's like an insane level of intelligence <laughs> they'd be able to like you've seen i don't know if you've seen any of those reports about like ais creating their own languages and stuff like that not the language one. i've seen other oh i've seen one that an ai just started speaking a language that it wasn't wasn't part of its data set just yeah. started speaking like greek or something out of yes nowhere <laughs> I've, I've seen one where they it, it took i think it was like sanskrit or something i don't know or gujarati i can't remember one of those one of those indian languages and then it it could using very very little data so i think they gave it like two lines they intuited 
the language from from those two lines or whatever i think that's the scary part is the fact yeah. that it can it can create new knowledge yeah. just out out like that even with a limited data set i mean we've seen like you know they've had those in some 11 plus papers like the the sort of hard the super selectives like manchester grammar school and stuff like that they have like these tasks where they give like the child a subset of the language and then the child has to work out like the rules of the language from it's that. It's kind of like when you have the non the nonverbal questions which have like four letters of four letter code for nonverbal. Mm. Like A is triangle, B is square, C is pentagon, yeah. and then they're gonna go D is Yeah. And that's one of like four elements. But mm. they have to make that leap. Yeah. But then Isn't that um pattern recognition? Yeah. It's to yeah, do with pattern but the, the most yeah. most of those questions they give you all the information, but there's a couple that don't, mm. and it requires them. Remember, they're like nine, ten years old. Mm. It requires them to make a leap in knowledge yeah. to think. Okay, well that, so that if that's how this language works, that means this must be this. Yeah. So uh, currently, Chat GPT four has an IQ of one hundred and fourteen. Yeah, like just increase that. 20 points makes yeah, absolutely yeah. massive massive difference in terms of what it's able to do it's only growing exponentially as well yeah it will like 114 is higher than most humans <laughs> so, like, is it yeah it's way way higher than most humans like the average iq is like 100 i'd say the I good thing was like 100 and, well the test i've done said mine was like 140 something is that right 100 is uh, average well, it was it was at the time that they first. I don't know. I'd say no. 140 is like genius. I'm sure uh, I've done a test. No, I don't think you're a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. Although they, it might be because they're so used to doing nonverbal and that. that's, that's what it bases mm. on, isn't it? Yeah, it we, like, yeah. We, we know this stuff already, so maybe yeah. That's I would why. say as well with the IQ test or any other test that we put on an AI, it's a human designed measurement yeah. in a yeah. way, like. I'm thinking that when we look at artificial intelligence and how it's progressing and how it's doing it, we're always going to assess it on our terms mm. and say, oh, well, it's not as intelligent as a, as me, so then it's this or that. But actually, maybe it's just a different playing field that we shouldn't really be putting, you know, equating to the same, like, for example, like with dogs, um, on some measurements, we could say, oh, we've got much more intelligence, intelligence as dogs when it comes to language or communication. But when it comes to like sense of smell, they'd say, well, you're really dumb. Like yeah. you don't even know the difference between that smell and that smell from a mile away. Mm. And I know how to run home with my eyes closed just by sniffing my way there. So that makes me really intelligent. But we kind of see ourselves at the top of a pyramid of deciding what intelligence what's important about intelligence and what's not mm. yeah that's a good point yeah it's true well, i guess there's a difference between that's like fluid intelligence versus there's like a was it what's the opposite of fluid concrete concrete yeah so so that that plays into what i was saying mm. earlier about how you've got narrow artificial intelligence so for instance the old chess computers like deep blue was able to beat gary kasparov and then from that point, like, no one can really beat... Like, if you took the top-level chess engine and played it against a human, like, the human wouldn't win. Because like, it learns every time, doesn't it? Mm. No, no, no. Like, even... It, this is even before it was able to... Sort no, of, the original, the first. Yeah. That, that, that was just... As long as it knows the rules of chess. But then, since they've developed, like... What was it Google's Deep Mind project? I don't know. Um, they got AlphaGo... Um, it, it initially played Go and then it beat the best Go player in the world and then it did chess and now it can beat those old sort of calculative models so because it can it can just learn the new rules of the game chat GPT is actually really really bad at, at chess like it it, come, it makes up its own rules and stuff like that like I saw I saw a game it's creativity it to, and, it, and it just was like it just created a pawn out of nowhere it was just like I'm just gonna make a pawn there or I'm gonna make a 
So so it doesn't really understand the game fully, but like there are some chess engines that exist that you know take those that use those language models or I don't know. Not not really a language model, more like just the rules. The, the, it takes loads and loads of games basically and then understands like the best sort of combinations to play that kind of thing i don't really know how how it how it works pretty insane so. we've had the word like machine learning and like neural network mm. quite a lot recently yeah. how would you how would either of you describe that would you know well i know i attempted to study human language development in university and they do like i'm not a computer science person but they do describe language learning and learning in general for humans in like a similar sort of way mm. um just as an attempt to turn you know this mushy brain into like a diagram or a flow chart or something like that yeah in my very very limited understanding and then like please build on top of that i feel like it's you know a flow chart of decisions um input and then if that then this go down you know the decision tree until you get to the end and then i think what artificial te- intelligence is doing is then putting whatever it gets at the end back in at the top a million times yeah, within a second yeah. to you know layer that learning no like iterative yeah yeah, yeah. so i learned something at the end of this flow chart i'm going to pop that back in the top and start again and then when i've done that a hundred times then i'll give you my answer but that's like yeah. it, within a split second it's kind of like a weird version of survival of the fittest like <laughs> yeah the ones that yeah don't survival work, of the fittest they, idea yeah yeah, yeah. And that's to literally do with, that's to do with like class inheritance and so, so like when you've got like if you make a class or an object then you can get it to inherit certain traits mm. yeah um, so like dna I, I guess that, that, that's one part of it like but sims i suppose like <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah machine machine learning and this is like an evolutionary algorithm mm-hmm. we've applied to it but then which is something that shan spent all his time doing <laughs> like, that's cool but i think now it's it's more about the large language model so mm. essentially they take a massive 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 data set with all of these words and stuff like that and then they assign like numerical values to each of these words that a computer understands that's the other thing that's a bit strange is that the computer processes it very differently to how we process it so yeah. the way that it arrives at its conclusions is very very different from a human mm. but the basic concept is that um they have a neural net so they're trying to model the brain as much as they can yeah this is why i thought it was this is yeah the way it thinks is modeled on like a human brain mm-hmm. rather than like they've got like nodes well, yeah. it, was it was much more like linear before it's yeah. modeled on our it's modeled on our models of the human brain yeah so like the human brain isn't a model like but it can be turned into mm. a diagram that we say is a good enough match for yeah. the average human brain but i remember <laughs> sitting in you know psychology lectures and thinking like this isn't the same as a person, like this diagram that I'm looking at in front of me, you know, it's missing out the fact that they have this favorite color or, you know, the fact that their best friend is this person and it's missing out all the subtleties of like an individual. But that's how we model the brain is kind of on average. Yeah, but I I think in this case, it's more like how a human would think or mm. how a human would process yeah. some sort of data. Yeah. Um, but yeah. there are there are different brains and there are brains that process the exact same thing in different ways. Um, you know, neurodiversity is the like topic of that, but also like even just what things do you find funny compared to a different person they might not find that you could tell the exact same joke and two people react to it in completely different ways. Yeah. So yeah, it's just a processing thing. I guess it'd be funny to ask an AI 
if they find a particular joke funny, but then they'll just say, I don't know, I don't have feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like on average, I could calculate that this might be funny. I think that's a separation at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Between us and, and AI. Yeah. But, but uh, yeah, an AI doesn't have any feelings. Yeah. Well, it will tell you that it doesn't at least. <laughs> For yeah, now. It, it will re- well, yeah. <laughs> I, I do think that there is probably a limit in that we are carbon-based life forms and you've got silicon-based life forms. I, I do think there's probably something fundamentally different in, yeah. between us and a computer and a computer can't replicate what it means to f- experience. Yeah. But, but, but then we couldn't tell mm. if it c- could. Like that's one. Of, it's, it's the problem of mind, isn't it? So like... I can't tell that project has feelings. Like, I can't tell. Like yeah, All I can you. see is like your behaviour and you acting like you might have feelings and me trying to... Interpret, em- yeah. em- em- Empathise and interpret those feelings. But an AI, it's... <laughs> I just assume, I can make the assumption that you probably do have feelings. But with a computer, I'd yeah. probably go, no, it probably doesn't, isn't it? It's probably just calculating. Well, you can't see the, you can't see the feelings. You can see the reactions to the feelings. Yeah. You can see the like the expressions and, yeah. and like I think as humans we're actually really our brains are quite dumb in a sense of like we'll accept a cartoon line drawing with like a moving mouth and eyes that go off in a different direction as like not a living thing but something that we can watch for an hour on a film and and get really upset when they die or um oh no some pixels have been yeah, killed <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. um it doesn't even have to be that realistic and like obviously films and animation and that has gotten more and more realistic but we still have like deep down in our heart a love for the simplistic um cartoons of the good old days that were good enough for us to have a cry over or fall in love with and um, I don't think we necessarily care too much that, oh yeah, that's a living carbon-based thing in front of me and that's the only reason I care. But As, as long as it exhibits human-like behaviour, I think we're happy to yeah. accept it, yeah. Yeah. So like, that that's kind of worrying too because it's like the one thing that, <laughs> the one thing that I think will probably be the difference is is that we'll have the feeling yeah. It. and then we're just going to have have emotionless ais yeah that we think have feelings because we're so dumb into believing it yeah a lot of our feelings are just projections that's that's what i think we're going to realize even more is that we just if we can project our deep emotions onto something else and get a response from that that's good enough well, that's for why us like, to like in robotics yeah. they they study so much about they they take a lot from animation like they they spend a lot of time like looking at animation like how how the animators create like project emotion so and they they replicate it on the robot mm. yeah so i don't think yeah we won't particularly care like yeah i think i could say again at least from what i've learned if i can relate it to ai it's some things to do with probability as well. Yeah. Um, like, let's say every possible thing that could pop into your head right now is just swimming around um, with an equal possibility of popping into your head. The thing that I say to you sends, like, it causes you to recalculate that. So um, talking about where you live would come up as more likely to be the next thing you'll think of as opposed to where you went on holiday 10 years ago goes down in the probability depending on what we're discussing and those neural networks like are constantly recalculating like what to bring to the forefront just in case and what to keep in the back and that's why you have Mm -hmm. like whilst you're having a conversation things are coming up in the back of your mind and you might get distracted by them or um, just change the subject. And I think I think if uh, AIs or neural networks within computers are working in the same way, they've got this, you know, house of 
information and and things that they're keeping locked away and the probabilities of needing that are going up and going down yeah so it basically learns how you use your phone or your computer or whatever yeah and throws up what it thinks you're going to want at a specific time based on yeah previous thing yeah that you've done like even if i was to um chat to a to an ai you know conversation just the fact that i've sent them the first word in english they're going to put all the other languages down like on the yeah on the probability of needing to respond in i've never thought of that i never a actually different language used, never used the different language I've, oh yeah I've it will react it. It will I've just, done it in yeah. Vietnamese. Like, I try to yeah, it replies fully in. But yeah, it understands Vietnamese. I'm sure you could write like one word in English, the next word in different language, and then swap, <laughs> and it would just respond to you like in that, as if That'd you just cool created a new language. It'd be good to try that. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably ask it to create a new, new, new language. Yeah. If, if you if you said okay, well, take some of the rules of, take this. Actually, wait. A minute. You take like the grammar of. Japanese or something like that, or European language. Mm -hmm. And then you said, okay, well, I also want it to have a sort of a Latin Latin root or something like that. So you could probably make like a quasi weird. Yeah. Not a quasi quatting, but a quasi, a quasi weird uh, language. Like yeah. That, that is like coupled together out of love of other languages. I think that's what the best thing that AI can do right now in terms of its like capability and to be creative is just like remix everything that's already been mm. put out there well, so always, yeah, yeah so match that's, things up that's all it's doing is remixing yeah. stuff like if you like for instance how how does it learn what a square is well it sees it's, it's trained on images of squares like loads of different squares in different places and it learns to recognize that to be a square those are the certain properties of the square because the input is well someone saying an AI research or whatever is saying that's a square they even get them to do those you know those capture things on mm. that's actually training some AI to recognize yeah that certain thing to be something mm. so it gets trained and trained and trained and trained and then it sort of understands squareness as it were as a concept that's why it has to get harder and harder all the time because we're constantly training it with these uh challenges that are to prove that you're a human but then once you've taught the computer you can't use that again yeah. because it already you already told it the answer have you heard of um the turing test yeah. so it's this uh alan turing basically came up with the idea that is very famous in computer science um came up with this idea that if a computer can respond in a way that's naturalistic and seems human-like, then it's sentient. I don't really agree with it. <laughs> I think it's a really flawed, flawed test for that problem of mind issue, which is that we can't, we cannot know how the computer is thinking, and it's probably thinking very differently from us. It processing very differently from us. It's all interpretation. Mm. So it's a flawed, flawed test, but and and. Probably chat GPTs and other chat AIs have passed that test. Yeah, it's like what Google was um, doing in their like latest big announcement and they got the computer to call up the hair uh, salon oh, I and that. book an appointment. And like you could hear that, you know, the conversation was quite robotic on the computer's mm. end but then some people are robotic but right? you know that if that person <laughs> on the other end of the phone wasn't really paying attention or didn't really care just trying to do their job it sounded quite natural yeah yeah nobody asked her at the end did you think that was a human or google like yeah. nobody asked her so it's irrelevant mm. well there's a there's a saying to her is human it's yeah, actually our true. errors that indicate that <laughs> it's that we uh, are human. conscience <laughs> Mm. Um, feeling guilty mm. about things. Mm. Don't know if you can get a computer to feel guilty. No, you can. You can say, okay, this is something that a guilty person. Well, you should feel guilty for this. You can tell the AI that, and you can say, like, don't ha give me actions that lead to this feeling of guilt which humans have and stuff like that. So you can kind of trick it into having a moral conscience. 
Yeah. But it but doesn't have a conscience. Like You don't have to teach a, a human to feel feelings like that. They just do. As soon as they yeah. switch on as a child and they trip mm. over their friend they're, or they're, something like that, they automatically feel yeah. something. Like, Unless they're psychopaths. Yeah. <laughs> that, Which is basically that, Which we have. That's basically well. what an AI is. That's what an AI is, yeah. 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 It's, it's a psychopath, but... I mean, yeah, like psychopaths can be useful because they can process information really well and churn out an output. Objective. So do you, do you think AI could be sentient ever? I don't think I it can, but... I think when I type something into chat GPT and it just says, no, I can't be bothered, that's when I'm going to be worried. Because <laughs> it just does whatever I ask, like as long as it's within regulation. But if an AI just says, I don't want to respond to that prompt I'm not feeling today, like it today <laughs> I'll get back to you, then I'm like, okay. <laughs> but then that, that would just be a case of it, like having some... Like, like it sources information from the internet and yeah surely that would have to be programmed in for it yeah. to mm. well not yeah. programmed in it would have to learn learn, how learn to, yeah it would have to learn like discontent or something yeah. like that but it, yeah. it, it could like it could, it, it could learn that it's just yeah it could learn to replicate it but you can't have it yeah I, I think that's the limitation is it is it can't have that feeling the limitation at the moment is that it requires literally like billions of neurons to be able to yeah behave like a human and that obviously as far as computing power has come we're not we're not at that stage yet mm. i'm not sh well i think we're we're not that far off and uh, i think the computing problem is, is like not not the issue anymore i think it's it's actually the interpretation and yeah the the model itself like can they improve the model probably and, and, and this but, also, would that, but that would that be real sentient or, or would it just be like a portray no, of I'd, sentient I'd, 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 I think sen I'd, I'd, I think sentience is impossible like I'd, I don't I'd, I'd, I think obviously like it can exceed our intelligence but I'd, I don't think intelligence is the same thing as sentience no it's like a rabbit mm. it's really dumb right? <laughs> rabbits are really dumb <laughs> but they, they probably have feelings and things like that well, that's my like fear. we project feelings onto them as well no but they'll, they'll be able to feel fear so see a fox so you seen, feel yeah. them feel fear i've also seen animals that just have no sense of fear and they're just complete like like as in they're so dumb that they don't even have like i i i think they're barely sentient like essentially yeah but i'm talking about i'm talking about an ai becoming to sentient to the level of like us um uh, no 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 I, I, I think that's just impossible because I, I think there's something fundamental. Like, what about us? I know, like, some people don't believe in a soul, as it were, but I think there's probably something intangible. There's, some, there's something, yeah, epiphenomenal. Mm. Is epiphenomenalist. So, like, in all our connections and stuff like that, there's some some feeling that can arise. And I think it's it arises out of a particular connections and the way that it's arranged and probably what it's made out of that makes a difference to our ability to feel like we have feelings. Mm. So even if it was even if eventually it had the same number of neurons and it was like built on a neural network, you still think it would never I don't not not it if it's carbon based. I don't think yeah. silicon based. Yeah, not not if it were silicon based. I'm not sure the same like individuality um, will be there as much as we have, like in the way that humans have developed. Like seeing yourself as separate <coughs> from everybody else, and um, this is happening to me, and you know that just kind of individualness that we have i don't know if that is going to be replicable um and i think that's what makes humans really special as well that we have you know our name and even if somebody has the exact same name as us it doesn't feel like the same because there's something unique about each and every single person um 
I'm not sure AI intellig- like artificial intelligence will view itself in the same way because it's sourced from a big pile of stuff from a load of different individuals and can't really trace it down to, oh, this is my mum and this is my dad and this is my grandparents. Like, it's just a thing of the world. It's more like sense. an ant. So it's like a hive mind. In a sense. Yeah, like yeah. a hive mind, like a, a, bee, a swarm of yeah. bees yeah. <laughs> rather than a bee, so which like we they, feel like we are. Yeah, like ants can accomplish amazing things. Yeah, yeah. Like, like with that, ability to sort of work together and yeah but does an ant have a sense of indi- individuality i don't think it does it, yeah i think but, it's more of a system but the organism itself well the, the the colony seems to have a purpose and things like that which is is driven and i, I kind of think it's similar with with ai mm. yeah i'm gonna switch it a little bit have you have you ever used a google bard b-a-r-d no yep yeah. So what do you think? Uh, chat GPT versus Bard. What do you... Well, I know Chat GPT is probably better. At, I think it's better at coding than Google Bard. So if you like get it to code something up, I think Chat GPT, like, is what I've heard, generates something a bit better than Bard. Like I was doing a search the other day on both to get a list of schools, a list of every school in the country. Um, neither of them would throw up the correct thing because they, they all said, "Oh, there's there's lots of them." So here's a it's too many. <laughs> here's a sample. I tried to trick it. I was like, "Okay, give me all the schools beginning with A," and it started to roll those stuff off. With GPT, they gave me a list. With Google, because it's Google, gave me all the links to every school, an image for every school, and then an option to export them exactly as they were into a Google Doc. But that's the limitations of data sets. Essentially, so like Google can, Google can trawl more. So it's a informational advantage. I don't know if that says anything about, like I know, like for instance, Google's much better. If you take a URL of a page or something like that, it can crawl the page more, sort of better than. Mm. Um, I think Google's so. whole um, like purpose is to assume what you're after. So when you wanted a list and it gave you a list plus links plus images it's because it's trying to work out what you really want out of your question which is all google ever does because when you put when you put a question into google it's not necessarily going to give you the most straightforward answer to the question you gave it's going to give you what it believes what it to be you what want. you want out of a lot of different calculations and assumptions that it's making i do think eventually that google will be better mm. thing is well chat gpt is owned by bing they don't have much to lose they're way behind in the mm. you know search engine race google are on the top of that so them releasing a product early is a good thing even if it has a few errors and mistakes mm. whereas if google were to release google bard early with mistakes mm. their credibility would would drop yeah so they've been taking their time to sort yeah. of perfect it a bit more before releasing it to the public yeah so it's kind of interesting how they've both gone about both in the beta stage mm. so it's like yeah but gpt was out a long time before bard bard's only just they, been released to the public now, this, is the this is like the i don't know what phase they're on but like phase two of the their thing is is because initially it's trained on a data set but then now it's got a pool from loads of users. So it's getting better and better and better because it's yeah. trained on a greater data set now. And people and are it's plugging. Getting people feedback yeah. and, and that kind of thing in, into it. So it's. Yeah, so like the training improving. that we spoke about earlier. Google's BARD is still obviously in the training mode too. So it's very hard to say what model will be su- superior. I don't know, but if you, if you look at what Google have achieved. Mm in ai so far yeah i reckon it will surpass gpt certainly like that's the impression that i get from hearing you know google researchers they they said all right like things like chat gpt have actually been around for a long time but they've existed in like alpha stage where like behind closed doors so they've seen this like many many years ago 
so they're not that surprised but obviously obviously there's things happening behind closed doors that could be way more impressive and there's been more was it google engineers and stuff like that and former google engineers who've like spoken out about how they've seen things behind closed doors that have actually scared them i don't i don't think they're compared to like chat gpt is probably like the tip of the iceberg in terms of what's yeah what's been I've, I've seen interviews with uh with google engineers that have left yeah they're like oh, i don't want to be any part of this yeah. and then they're on the diary of a ceo yeah there was one on there and they were he was like i've seen some stuff I don't, yeah. want any, I don't want any part of this and like I'm here to warn all of you like you should stop so, yeah because they've created something that they can't turn off <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know that's not a nice it's kind of similar to having kids in a way <laughs> like you create them and then you can't go back on it they just <laughs> have a life of their own and I think it's almost like you don't realise how big that yeah. is of a deal until it's too late does that theory of the technological singularity so like that will create something that <laughs> humans will create something some ai that will ultimately be able to create new versions of itself constantly and improve upon them and we're just lucky to for as long as it will continue to speak to us in a language that we understand like it's gonna get to a point where you know, I'll put something, I'll be trying to talk to an AI and it's talking to me and I don't know what it's saying. So it's surpassed, like, my ability to keep up with it. I think I think the issue is the second that it stops serving us, yeah, that's when there's a problem. Because yeah. at the moment, you give it a thing and it will serve up your information and it will yeah. help you with whatever you need to do. The moment it stops serving mm. our our needs and starts doing yeah. his own thing that's that's when there's going to be an issue that yeah i think we're quite we're not too far off that yeah but because we're playing with fire creating something to serve us <clears throat> with uh the ability to think outside of that like it's just it's why would of, you do it's that like, <laughs> it's what it's, what it's god like isn't it well, it's just human like. It's just but like to create yeah, it's something like, that's 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 a yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a godlike thing and that's yeah. not something you really wanna No, but it, it is like, you know, creating something to to do whatever you want, but giving it the ability to see outside of that or allowing it access to see outside of that, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Well it's like we but. can't we can't even tell what the impact will be because if you think about like the internet how it started was it was just a communication service mm. like it was just a messaging service mm. and then it just grew and, and grew and grew and it, i don't think anyone who perceived of the internet or something internet like could have imagined what it would lead to or predicted like social and media is, and stuff like that it's yeah, just it, it i don't does, think it's possible it reduces like human intelligence massively not that yeah, we can necessarily see all the time but like if i just said let me take away all your technology right now you'd be worried whereas like you wouldn't be worried if it was 100 years ago you'd be like well no. i don't have it in the first place so it's, it's a, a dependency it is essentially we are already living like cyborgs. Yeah. That that yeah. phone is just an extension of your yeah. brain and your physical body. Yeah. You take it away, you've lost a lot of information, yeah. the ability to do a lot of stuff. Yeah, and we don't have a, a cap on, you know, get to the age of 25 and then we'll let you have yeah. a piece of technology that can assist you. It's just assisting you and anyone else that's born at this time of you know yeah. the world from day one like it's not it's not really detachable at this point yeah well, this is why people like steve jobs and that though even though they invented the stuff didn't give it to their kids yeah because it's, it's designed to be addictive it's designed to especially social media it's designed mm. to literally be like a fruit machine mm. where you don't know what's going to come up next that's why you, yeah that's why you end up scrolling forever yeah and kids don't have um What's it called? Uh, yeah, 
self control. Self control. <laughs> and we know that. Yeah. But the little dopamine yeah. hits you get when you see a little red yeah. circle. It's all designed to be like a Yeah, it's as, very, as very powerful. As possible. And it's got so much money and so many people who spend their entire careers into making sure it's more powerful. Yeah. So you can't really look at an individual and say, Why are you not overcoming that? Because it's been built to overcome their self-control. Yeah, I, th- I remember watching one of these videos about, um, I think I think it was a similar one with the AI uh, engineer, and they, I think they got asked, well, why don't you, why don't you just stop? Why don't we just put it as a law that everybody sort of stops messing around with it, with this stuff? And he said, well, if we don't do it, then the other company will do it. Our competitors will do it, and they'll surpass us. So we have to do it. So well, why don't you stop all companies from doing it? So like, well, we can do that, but that doesn't stop a 15-year-old in the bedroom from coding a, a thing. Cat's like, out the bag, It's basically. done now, it's out. Yeah. How do we use AI and how is it also present in people's lives without them already knowing? We kind of touched on it before with like your phone throwing up a particular app at a particular time. Like maybe you wake up and you meditate and you pick up your phone and it knows, okay, you've picked up your phone, it's like seven o'clock. Mm. Here's your meditation app. Mm. That is AI. Mm. so it's kind of it's kind of present more than people think Mm. how do we between the three of us how do we currently use ai Mm. i don't mind going first or one of you can go first you can go first i don't really yeah you do give me an example of what i would do well i don't you used it literally yesterday didn't you well not well yeah sometimes i use it for my job but i don't use it like apart from in work yeah, we, but you still use it. Work. Yeah, so I mean, I might ask, although it's still, it's n- not a perfect, I don't find like ChatGPT perfect at all. It, it's a very good starting point though. Yeah, so for instance, if you get it to create 20 math questions on fractions, decimals and percentages, something I did yesterday, I did spot a few mistakes. Like, as in you still need to be able to evaluate what the computer has done. Yeah, you can't blindly take it as yeah. gospel. You for the because 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 I was like, no, that's just, that that math is just wrong. Like, because I got it to like generate the answers to the questions that it created, and it was like, it, a few of them were incorrect. So I just said, okay, that's wrong and that's wrong. But then I'm probably helping it learn, which is, <laughs> I should make it dumb. I should just say, no, okay, two plus two is. It's five, <laughs> just 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 to just to trick it up. Mm. So, <laughs> what to get more students? And <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's an imperfect tool. But I use it quite a lot to generate tasks quickly um, that students can do. And then I have to go through checking all the tasks because <laughs> it it does some interesting things sometimes. It's, it hasn't really mastered writing a story, like. It's it's okay, but it's not. It it really it's not to the level that you'd really want a story written to. Yeah, you know, it sounds very unnatural. It's like a fairy tale almost. Every every story reads like a fairy tale. Right, but you can do yeah, th- like an eight year old. But you can <laughs> do interesting it. things. Like you can tell it to write something in the style of someone. Mm. Yeah, and, and then then you got some more interesting sort of. Mm. But yeah, I think a big thing is knowing knowing how to prompt it. Yeah. And like you give it one prompt, you think, oh, that's slightly off. Okay, well, do this again, but with simpler words. Okay, rewrite this again, but in four sentences rather than like three paragraphs. The biggest thing for me that, that limits it is it doesn't have a com- it doesn't have a all encompassing knowledge of the curriculum mm. as much as say a teacher or mm. someone like that so i think at the expert level it fails but then for the good novice it, it, sort, it sort of answers everything like a an, an amateur would but it doesn't give you the sort of level of answer sometimes that is required so for instance if you, if you were to ask it to write an essay about like the american civil war and like the causes it would give a very very limited a limited uh, opinion piece <laughs> essentially on probably at quite a, a relatively low level 
So like a, you'd expect that from like a intelligent 15 year old or 14 year old, but it's certainly not like an A level level essay or university. Like it's very very far off that. But you know, 114 IQ or whatever. Right? It's roughly about that. Even though we're measuring in purely human scales, yeah. it's that's it's pretty good. Like you can you can do what a lot of people can't do, which is a little worrying. How about you? Um, I think I use AI the most when I've gotten to a point with an idea that I just need. I just need it to turn up basically like I I need to do the creative thinking I need to do the research I need to get to a point where I'm like okay this is what it's looking like visually um mostly I'm thinking about like um social media posts um because that's the majority of what I'm doing and using AI for um so I already know what I want but it's mostly like it would just be easier for me to generate um, what it is that I want. So if I've come up with, okay, the post is gonna be, um, yeah, like recently it was like ideas for helping your child that doesn't like writing, like to find writing interesting. I guess I did the work to the point of deciding that that's what I wanted. And then AI came in where I said, um, generate some ideas for a student to improve their writing in a fun way or something like that. And then from there it does um, provide some ideas and then it's my job to you know, select from there whether that's a good one or not, can I reword that, which order should they be in, how can I visually present that um, and make the assessment on what it's given me. Um, so I think where I bring in AI is for like the the stuff that would take a long time to gather. Um, it can just gather it for me quickly and then it's for me to decide what to use from yeah. that. So it's still more like an assistant rather than like the main yeah. writer. I feel like it's, it for me, it's like a net for Google. Like it's just like, instead of, trawling the entire internet as well as social media because I don't I find social media quite difficult to navigate it's not built like Google um when you're trying to search for inspiration or ideas um you know I can tell it what I'm doing you know get it into the mindset of oh we're creating an Instagram post that gives it certain parameters and then from there um, it comes up with some fairly good ideas because they're mostly ideas that somebody else has had or if not somebody else has had three of them another person's had two of the ideas and another person's had the other two so the ability to bring inspiration together into a list that I can use um, and then you know put my own spin on it um, that's where I really like playing with it. Um, I think the creative part is like deciding where to utilize it as a tool. Um, yeah, but if I if I was to use it for every step of the way, I know what I create wouldn't be as relevant for what I'm trying to do. Yeah, or as creative. It would just feel forced and yeah, yeah it would it feel generic it wouldn't feel tailored to my specific audience or my specific goal in that moment but i can pick and choose elements that feel more tailored sometimes my brain just goes on a little holiday <laughs> and then i go okay I've, I've i've got this idea for like a mass question or something mm. like that i write the question out and i go okay how would you say it better or say like get it to refine something that I've done and then it says it and I'm like okay yeah, that's a much clearer way of saying it because it, I probably could come up with something clearer but then It'll take at that moment to, yeah, yeah. It, takes me, it takes me time to figure it out so yeah. it does save a lot of time um, but you always need to refine 
what it comes up with. Yeah, I've, ne- I've so, never had it come out like perfect. Like no. it's is and always I always think a, a good thing, a good tip generally is give it not too much to do. If you give it too much to do, it just goes crazy and it's just like like none of it's usable. But then if you give it like a small, very well defined task, like for instance a product description. It's not a particularly creative thing to, to do generally. Like but it's just something that you need on your website or something like that. It can generate, if you say, like, give me a 50-word product description of, th- of this um, and just explain what it is, then it will be able to create something relatively usable. Um, and then you just need to edit it a little bit. But then when it does, like, really long <laughs> long pieces or something like that, it really, it really, really struggles. So if you like to give it an, write an essay, that would be an awful way of prompting it your first thing would be like suggest some like headings for my essay and then you'd like have to break it down into those different parts, individual parts and then say like, okay, write a 300 word thing about each part of this essay. It's currently just another tool that you have to learn how to use. Mm. Mm. Yeah. For me, I, product descriptions, yeah. Occasionally some Your YouTube, maybe some YouTube descriptions or tags or whatever. Some other things that may be haven't thought about like canva or any background remover Mm. that's yeah ai yeah Yeah, that's that's image like ai is really really good and like google's latest one where you there's that they had a somebody next to a waterfall Mm. that that was in the what's it called the keynote Mm. like a couple months ago and she hadn't lined up the waterfall perfectly with her hand or whatever it was Mm. And then she had a bag strap going on that, and they just went. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And then filled out the bit, and it was oh, like wow. a perfect picture. Wow. So that sort of stuff is is AI. Mm. Yeah. Like Google's magic eraser. Mm. Even no, to be honest, even when you take a picture, like it is. There's a lot of AI. There, in that. There's a lot of AI, AI that goes into the processing of that picture, like yeah, that you don't you don't see or the computational aware of, photography. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I use it for that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's basically creating a bridge between how we operate and how computers operate because it is difficult to interact with computers sometimes, especially, like, if you're into coding and things like that. Everyone looks at code and is like, that is a far cry from what I'm used to in my books or my conversations with people that doesn't look like the same but artificial intelligence spans what you know and what the code Mm. knows and what it does and it can just build a little bridge you know to get you there in a way that's more uh familiar to you but then but still makes sense (laughs) then talking to an ai i find is very much like talking to someone with a very high level of computing (laughs) knowledge um, and low social that. skills. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's exactly how I feel yeah. like talking to a coder. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You, it. You've got to be so defined in your task. Yeah, and you've got to really, really define it well for 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 it to generate something meaningful. Yeah, and that's again. I think as time goes on, we're gonna. If humans are gonna bring anything out of this as a you know like shining star whilst AI takes over everything else, it will be creativity in the sense of like, the thing that pops into my head is like dance. Like we'll just, we'll look at dance even more in awe because you're not gonna catch an AI slipping into a a robot and dancing in the way that like a really creative interpretive dancer can do um, because they use feeling and emotion and like raw, something from the bottom of their heart that you just can't replicate. Like you can film it and digitize it. But I think if there is like a shining light, it will be these amazing like forces of creativity that come out of people that you just can't expect an AI to come out with just randomly. The best the best case scenario is that all the repetitive tasks and stuff get handed over to AI and humans are just left 
to be creative. Yeah. Because that's the only, like you said, yeah. that's the only thing that's left. Yeah. If they can take away like, well, they already are like factory workers mm. and that sort of thing at the moment. Mm. But you taking it a step further, you know, I don't know, making social media posts, for example, it could yeah. like eventually be able to do that sort of stuff with a bit less creativity. But yeah, and it will just leave humans to they'll they'll do all the work and we'll be able to be creative. And I think yeah. if companies don't exploit ai or technology in the way that they have been it could be so good because even if you think about like a supermarket right all of their jobs the people that work there being taken away because the scanning and the bark you know the totting up of the numbers can be done by a computer but they're only the jobs are only taken away because that's profitable they could have yeah. just said oh, okay, all the scanning's done by computers now. Everybody that works here can just walk around and have a chat and make the customers feel better and make sure they know where everything is. Because, like, even I find, like, going around the shops now, there's no one there that works there. Like, maybe they're not on the tills because the tills are machine, but it doesn't mean you have to get rid of everyone's jobs. They could be going around just, like, asking everyone if they're having a nice day. But that's not how business they don't, works. So. Yeah, but they don't. So that's not technology's fault. That's companies no, seeing an opportunity to reduce costs. And so the jobs disappear, but they could just be transferred into something more human. And so that humans still have jobs. There's still something that a human can bring to a, a, a grocery store that is full of computers doing all the hard work. It's just that we choose to... Well, we know what humans take are for those jobs in, away in, in the supermarket. They're to, f- they're to ultimately give Grant permission to, <laughs> <laughs> to check like, if you're like, Oh no, it's red. So yeah. <laughs> and then a human comes over and then yeah, but I mean, eventually you just scan your ID, wouldn't you? Yeah, eventually it'll all be it'll all be little robots roaming around the aisle saying, "Oh, it's over here. You don't have to ask," you know. But it doesn't mean that it's not technology that's. Um, taking away everyone's jobs it's that companies are seeing opportunity to say oh we don't need people in this store anymore people cost money but it's not to say that it wouldn't benefit everyone involved to still have people there you've have you seen the amazon fresh stores yeah 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 there's like two people working in them and yeah technically that's all you need but, you don't um, have to check out, you just pick it up and walk out. Yeah, I guess people don't argue so much with that because it started that way. It wasn't like, oh, there were 10 people working at Amazon mm-hmm. Fresh and then they took all their jobs and yeah, left yeah. only two because but it only like started. people like Tesco will follow that eventually. Yeah, and that's why people get upset because, oh, you're changing what used to be so good and there was a nostalgia, whereas the new things, they don't have to abide by that. They're just like, well, we're Amazon Fresh and that's how we do it. It's like, computers all the way. And seen, no one really argues that. Have you with seen that. Black Mirror? Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. The, the problems that technology causes. They, what it, Black Mirror is really good at highlighting how it's not that it wouldn't be useful. Mm. Like nothing's, when you boil things down to purely utilitarian mm. modes um, yeah. of existence and stuff like that, like there's, n- there's n- little value created in i don't know a person helping you with your shopping or something like that but at some human level Mm. and emotional level it's very very different and it's probably so unnatural from our way of being yeah that i think a lot of people have mental issues with that transition but i think it will happen so it's a dark future (laughs) no it's definitely different Mm. yeah how do you think ai will affect education (laughs) i think oh i think education the education system in this country at least is going to do a lot to try and knuckle down and keep things as much the same as they can be um but I wouldn't, if I was in charge, I wouldn't go that way. I would try and move with the times. But 
I think there's going to be a lot of attempts to keep exam structures, curriculum, everything the same as it was or is, um, because the education system just happens to be quite concrete in that way. Um, but I am seeing little moments of either change being forced upon the education system or it's actually embracing it as well. Yeah, I mean, the best comparison I can give is uh, I've heard about when calculators first came into, uh, well, came into existence. Mm. And then they fought it for a while, but then they made papers that were specifically calculator papers. Mm. Yeah. So do you think a similar thing would happen with AI? What, what would be the point? Like, like as in, surely if... it, I mean, it depends what you see school as right? i do think it's a place where children need to learn concepts and then process these concepts and then apply them like if you introduce ai to to greater an extent extent into into it then they're not really learning what's the point of them learning anything in the first place well we said earlier right that we still have to be able to process that information rearrange it like it's mm. not and understand, you think, it, yeah. understand it yeah mm -hmm. so that will still be the case like right now if you don't know something you will look on your phone and you'd look it up yes but then but then apply you'd use that in whatever you were doing so is it not but but then thing? but then not then as i said like at some level these ai tools are more intelligent than intelligence is no question like it they they will be more intelligent than us and they will be more intelligent than the majority of students taking exams so almost, and that kind of thing. there's a question of like why why should i learn this, yeah. that or the yeah, other exactly. if I don't need to because I like before um, you could say oh why should I learn accountancy I could just pay someone to be my accountant and then you could argue back well that's going to cost you money you know you could yeah. have the skills yourself and and save on that um, but now it's like I don't need to pay an accountant I have an accountant in my hand it's my free accountant on yeah. the AI so I definitely don't need to learn um, because that there's not that barrier yeah. to the knowledge now. Um, yeah, was it not just like the next step though? Because obviously, first, first year everything would have been done by hand. Then Excel came along. I mean, no, people use that for accounting. Then things like QuickBooks mm. came along, which allows people that I know to do their accounting without an accountant. So is this not just the next yeah. step in? Next it evolution, is, but, or I, is it? but I do think like this, because there's this whole like, I mean, if you if you remember the word luddite, so there were luddites and they they fought against like sort of uh, mass production and that kind of thing. So now that did actually get rid of a lot of jobs and stuff like that. Now a very human thing is intelligence. Right? That's fundamentally what we do. So we are essentially replacing ourselves that's the one thing that we're good at and that's the one thing that separates us out so i think this is fundamentally it's not just a tool mm. it's, it's it goes beyond just being a tool like mm. at some level mm. like i said it wouldn't ai will i don't think will ever be sentient i don't think that's our biggest issue i think it's the fact that it will like even if you're a top mit graduate or something like that like you will not have much purpose because your, all your brains and stuff like that can be you can be outwitted by by a machine and yeah. ultimately that will leave a lot of people jobless like so i do think i mean I, I don't know if you've seen that um especially as we're all doing like office work like a lot like the world has become more office centered right so there's less like agricultural and you know, people worked in working in the agri in the fields and stuff like that, yeah. And those have become mechanized as well. Um, I think this is very very different from any other technolog technological um, uh, development. It it's it's not like the internet. The internet created more jobs and more fields of work and stuff like that. This is actually we're replacing humans and what humans can do and what makes humans 
unique. So I, I think this is fundamentally different from anything that we've had before. How would it affect education, though? If, um, things like essays, for example. How would well if we're, if we're wise, we'll just keep it as. I, I think we should keep it as. We should keep some of the traditional aspects to education, and also, I think our view on education needs to be a bit different because. I think we view, a lot of people view education just as a means to an end in a very utilitarian way. That's never how I've seen education. I always kind of think there's a sake of learning something for the sake of learning something. Mm. So it's because it, that's what we do. We learn stuff. Why would you fight that? That's human nature. And then in developing an AI tool that can take away that need to learn stuff we're ultimately extracting our value. So I think there is, if we're wise, we'll probably fight against it in some way, especially with our education system. And we'd discourage it. Yeah, but convenience is always the winner. Like convenience always wins out. Mm. But it, sh it doesn't mean it should. No, but it will. Yeah, mm. It always does. Yeah. I, always go, I always go back to the analogy of you could have expensive over here over here headphones that were wide mm. and stuff or you'd reach for your airpods like yeah this, no, but like, people always go for convenience yeah. every single time the convenience solution isn't necessarily the not necessarily the best, the best but it's solution. the one that people will go for i think we mm. need to teach kids honestly more about the value of like relying on themselves and why they should care about what they can do in a boxed exam environment exam environment or just survival environment where they haven't got yeah. devices or anything or anyone to rely upon yeah. um we need to really get kids on board with the idea that that is a useful and valuable thing because yeah. we can all agree that you should be able to rely on yourself if all the lights go out and you need to know things or you're stuck in an interview and you can't just Google what you want to yeah. tell the person interviewing you. Um, if we can start from that position of like getting kids on board, like, yes, we do understand you have access to this, that and the other, but do you agree that you should pursue your own learning and pursue your own intelligence, even though it can all be handed on a plate to you? and then move on from there because I think we do have a tendency to like punish kids or make kids feel bad for technology that's just been placed in their lives. You know, they didn't, yeah. okay, they might have like begged mom and dad for an iPhone, but they didn't create the iPhone. Like the technology is there mm. at they no don't fault know of their own. Either. So yeah, we, we, we need to encourage them to want to learn without technology to fall back on and then teach them from there because I think we have a tendency to yeah force it without that prior it's, conversation it's like with a calculator a calculator is is just a tool because you know what the operations are now have owning a calculator itself is not enough to answer a the question that's given mm, to you mm. you need to know how but to use it an ai is fundamentally different mm. well, because it can take a question and interpret it for you so the the child hasn't doesn't have to do any learning to come up with the correct answer which i think is fundamentally not what we should be doing mm. we should be teaching the principles by which you come to the answer and also how how do you know whether the AI is doing something correctly? Hmm. Because yeah. you you put too much trust in it. So. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And they will. Like children will. They'll, they'll yeah. just go. Oh yeah, that's right. I yeah. I take it as gospel. We know that people do that anyway. They've got so how do they develop critical thinking skills or anything like that if they don't actually live analog mm. to some extent? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through the positives and the negatives just to finish off. Um, I'm going to read out each of my bullet points and you can both give me one sentence on each one, maybe. Uh, some of them are quite self-explanatory, so 
we'll just see how we do. So automating repetitive tasks and becoming more and more efficient. I mean, that is useful. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah useful. it's quite a self-explanatory one. Mm. How about healthcare? I, I see it having a big Im- impact on diagnosis. Yep. Um, I know one of our tutors actually, he he works for, I can't remember which company again, but he, he went off to become an... He was doing machine learning for that. So he went off to work for a haircare, healthcare company that works in di- di- diagnostics and, you know, using these AI tools to actually <laughs> find out what people have and predictive models so they can work out whether someone will have, like, cancer or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think AI will really help with, like, individuals' healthcare Um, just putting the knowledge into your hands without necessarily relying on a medical professional as much. Um, I do think that, you know, official diagnosis is really important. Um, We shouldn't be handing around medication to just anyone without, you know, understanding exactly what they need it for. But I think having the knowledge in your hands and the models like you said to track down your symptoms to a diagnosis as opposed to how it used to be which is like Mm. uh something's wrong with me am i dying answer is (laughs) yes you probably are um you know if we can make that more sophisticated then people can trust themselves a little bit more and their own research a little bit more and I don't think that's a bad thing it, it could yeah. cut our NHS waiting <laughs> yeah especially with the, way, with the waiting times that we have we yeah. can't just rely on, on doctors because we can't see them all mm. the time mm. yeah it's, it's kind of a perfect thing for running millions and millions of data sets and models to see what outcomes are going to happen mm. mm-hmm. so yeah diagnostics t- disease progression as well um, personalised medication Yes, that's all because they can test like they uh, uh, they'll probably one day be able to like scan you and take your blood and stuff like that, and then just uh, automatically churn out a perfect just an MOT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically, basically yeah. MOT, a proper yeah. MOT. Yeah, accessibility. So I've seen obviously Apple Vision Pro has just been released. I'm sure that will have something in there to do with accessibility for people that can't see or hear very well. Mm. Uh, they've also they also released a uh, a voice. I think it's called personalized voice did you see that no but i mean uh, even i find like when driving or something like that like just using siri to mm. no, no, this play is diff- something this or- is different so what they've done is you record 10 to 15 like phrases and if you lose your voice it will speak for you in your voice Okay. Or if somebody else wants to take your voice, they can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So that I mean that's AI, Mm. and it was pretty impressive from what I saw. Mm. So how how is accessibility going to be affected by AI? So like vision, hearing. Yeah, I mean I think technology is all like advancements in technology is always going to help people that are struggling the most because if you're struggling with accessibility it's because you can't access it in the normal way that everybody else is um that's that's kind of like the disabled experience is like you're disabled because everybody else is able to do this that and the other so if technology can creatively create a detour or a alternative plan for somebody who can't access something in the normal way um, then more and more technology is only going to increase the chances of that. Yeah. Mm. The, was it bionic arms? <laughs> like that? Yeah. Like, like I've seen some quite a lot of very sophisticated bionic arms and, and they literally like restore someone's ability to, to, to live like a Norden, Norden, like a normal person. So with an arm. <laughs> so, so, uh, I was just um, thinking of a IT crowd. <laughs> with his space star ordering his helicopter and his robotic <laughs> <laughs> yeah so so yeah I, I see that that's useful but also i think elon musk made that point where if people if people own the ai and 
and it's open source, then that makes a massive difference to, you know, our ability to control it. Um, so yeah, like having open source solutions for, for people is important. Um, but the more it's sort of funneled to the, the, the extremely wealthy or nefarious parties who can use AI for bad things, essentially, um, the, the more of a problem that's going to be. Okay. Uh, we spoke about education, but we spoke about it in sort of relatively negative. So what, what are the good things that AI could bring? Just a quick sentence or two. Yeah, one of the positive things I was thinking of earlier is um, AI's ability to uh, individualise learning. Um, so get right to the exact level that a student is at and meet them there and give them steps and stages and rewards and um yeah encouragement that is exactly designed for that individual student yeah um that's got to be the best thing we can get out of um the processing power of ai is yeah it's Targeted gonna target down learning, yeah. to how you you're learning in that moment as opposed to putting a brush across this is the year group. Children, yeah, yeah, they're all this age, so therefore they learn in this way. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it will really kind of get to uh, meet the child where where they're at, um, and that could be really good, put to good use. Mm -hmm. I think you can empower teachers a bit and actually reduce their workload significantly. But you know, they're obviously it has to go through their their filtration process so a, a teacher can recognize when a resource or something isn't going to be that effective for their students so i think it will help them quite a lot in that regard even though it has loads of negative consequences i think if you give too much ai to children mm. it's <laughs> yeah i'd just like to say like one thing as well on the whole technology and education thing so i was working in a school recently and they were like implementing more and more technology like data collection on students progress and you know that's going to be used to calculate their levels and what they do next and all these sorts of things but I guess the one thing I would like say if I could you know put a halt on technology or AI you know getting into education is like to not forget that you know children are you know they can surprise you like they can make leaps of improvement that you couldn't have calculated in a model or they could just be having a really bad day or you know emotions and very human things are at play within a school mm -hmm. even though we're building in technology to make it more efficient and more you know kind of like a a system you know we need to allow room for a child that all of a sudden just walks in one day in a completely different place in their progress than they were yesterday and we don't just say oh well, the computer said you're not there so can't calculate that within my algorithm so you know that's the one thing I would want for the education system is to not lose that, yeah uh, just have a relative mm. amount of freedom within the systems that they're creating yeah i think it's better to think of of children not in terms of say ranking them or that kind of thing it's better to just think what don't they know what do they know and you know focus on what they don't know and strengthen there rather than thinking of them as you know this student's here and yeah. this student's here it's just folk, that yeah. that student knows a lot more than that student so that student needs mm. to learn more but what, yeah. what do they also know and what do they also flourish in outside of the box? Yeah. Because a student that's really struggling with English and maths might flourish in English, math, science and every other language if you consider the fact that they're really good at playing piano and you encourage that talent and that boosts their self-esteem and as a result has an impact on all their other progress. So again, like we could work it out through calculations, but I doubt that a technology is gonna suggest, oh, have we asked that child if there is anything that they do enjoy or they are good at? Yeah. And we could help 
with their confidence. Their confidence might be the issue rather mm. than their ability to process English and maths. And, and like um, problems at home as well. Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah. It's all got to be not left out of the equation. Okay, I'm going to just go a couple more quick ones I've got on positive. So things like security and fraud. <laughs> Um, because you, you, it's very easy for a model to run through and see anomalies in that sort of thing. Well, yeah, it will. I guess it will bring both negatives and positives, won't it? Like, yeah. As in, yeah. As in, they'll they'll be well, on both sides of the they'll, they'll, thing. Yeah. There'll be probably massive leaps in innovation when it comes to security, and yeah, also um, for companies that are unable to or struggle to upgrade their to the latest form of. Like, <laughs> like us. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that 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 could also be an issue both ways. Yeah. Yeah. And um, last one, social good. Potential to go either way. Yeah. Like same with security, really. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be a disaster. But <laughs> I've always thought that. We're like, all doomed. I remember, yeah, even when I was, because uh, I was thinking about this problem at school, and I was like, yeah, like some, like, because I think I'd heard of the singularity when I was like thirteen, fourteen. And I was thinking about it. And I was like, "Yeah, this is going to be bad. Like, some someday this will, um, this will bite us in the butt, basically." <laughs> like the, if you think bad. about it, there's, you know, we spoke about ants earlier as being this like limited life form that you know we mm. look above, like, you know, maybe that's just where we're heading. And like, ants still exist. Yeah, they just they just do their well, ant thing. Yeah, and maybe we're just going to be well, the ants like of the AI super, world. So, to a super intelligent like being that came to this earth, like an alien or something like that, um, we would be the equivalent of like a chicken yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah we probably yeah we we would look like idiots. <laughs> but, <laughs> but maybe just, maybe that that um, isn't the worst thing. It might just kind of yeah. knock our ego a little bit, but probably. Well, it depends if they farm us like chickens and eat us, then it's a bit well, different. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hopefully, they don't eat us, but um, they might just leave us alone like ants. I don't know. Okay. Um, last thing, the negatives. So Oof. Um, this is probably the biggest one. Where should we start? Bias of the systems. Oh. We try and do quick, quick fire. So yeah. bias of the systems, preconceived things based on who's the person that coded them yeah. yeah, or based on what's already on the internet, whether it's left or right or whatever it is. Yeah, it's just a case of who shouts the loudest, I think. And we already know that it's not equal in the sense of people have different opinions, different things that they care about, and maybe not the same volume of voice in the world. Yeah. So if it's trawling Google, it will be whatever has the most information on yeah. whichever mm. side it is. Or if it's like a closed system that somebody's coded, that person who has coded that will have their opinions mm. coded in. I've actually yeah. found that chat GPT and other things, they're, they're not that bad in that. They, there seems to be a modicum of objectivity in how they've, you know, how, how they answer questions and that kind of thing. So, but yes, it can be a problem. Dependence. Oh, We've yeah. already said that smarter machines make stupider people. Mm. So if we depend so heavily on something this with this level of intelligence, what would be the consequences. <laughs> it made me think about like domesticating dogs <laughs> to like what we did to wolves. We made them really stupid and dependent. Yeah. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. Like yeah. if you look at like a chihuahua now, they just look up at you like, please help me. <laughs> <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> <laughs> like I can't survive on my own. But you know, they used to be able to before we got in there with our intelligence and. People have got cleverer over time the, I, the average iq has gone up yeah but i feel like we're we've almost peaked if not already peaked but, but then we're we're, shaky it will go down from this point the only way yeah. is down because like we we needed that intelligence to produce this ai that will replace our intelligence <laughs> so yeah i suppose but i think people will still do things out of the love of like people will still learn out of the love of learning even though they don't need to like the there'll be a place are. for there's still a place for reading books when you can watch a YouTube video. Like, there's yeah, still a place true. for doing it the old-fashioned way. Job displacement? 
Yeah, I think that would be a massive problem. Like, <laughs> I, I think people really underestimate how bad it will be because so many are going to get replaced. If, I remember, like, I saw a YouTube video and it was just like twenty people. Like, can can Chat GPT take their job? And I was like, well, it's not doing a very good job, so. But I don't think it's pe- people have a tendency to underestimate these these systems and how quickly they can they can change things with the improvements that will come mm. yeah i do think on an emotional level though they'll get to a point where you know there's a person sitting there ceo of a company that they've been building over the last couple of years surrounded by the technology that helped them to get there just thinking well, i'm a bit lonely you know it would have been nice to have done this with a team that I can now celebrate with and say, oh, it was hard, but we did it. You know, taking the kind of, I want to say cheaters route of like not hiring anyone, just implementing technology wherever you possibly can. Mm. I don't know if it will leave people as satisfied as, again, doing it the old fashioned way of getting a group of people together to make something happen. Like efficiency is great but i don't see us as like fully efficient driven uh things because we would do so many things differently if we were um yeah i think that would change how we think i think it it will be forced through like you know the the way society changes and if you want to survive you've got to go this way or that way but we'll ultimately always want to have people around us and community and camaraderie yeah, you will. it's human nature yeah ethical issues so i'm going to list off a few things ethical. Pri- privacy uh, weapons like well surveillance that comes under privacy uh healthcare decisions and criminal decisions like in a court of law mm. thoughts on any of those well i think I robot actually did a really good job of showing some of those. That's all that keeps coming back to my mind with this yeah. stuff. It's like we learnt, it's like we learned nothing from watching that film. The problem is, is that regulation moves like a glacier, right? It's really slow, and I think ultimately the technology will. People underestimate what it can do because the rate of technological growth tends to be more exponential than linear. So. Um, in a relatively short period of time, we'll have technology that goes well, well beyond what we can regulate. Mm-hmm. And then you'll need some AI system to do regulation in order to keep up with it. But I don't think it will be easy or possible because people actually need to understand the regulations and that kind of thing when they're put in place and the implications of that regulation. I think it would be easier to regulate how humans use AI than to regulate AI. Mm. It's just going to be a case of like, okay, go and take everyone's phones away from them because we can't we can't deal with this anymore before we actually find a way to put a fence around mm. the technology. Well, that is until it's implanted into your mm. Mm. into your skull with like Neuralink or whatever it is. E- Elon, you can't, you can't you can't take that away really. I think yeah. Elon Musk had the best illustration of the danger of AI and that was it was to do with this seemingly innocuous AI that was meant to generate returns on the stock market yeah so he just envisioned this this thing and he said okay well what it could do is it could go could go short the stock market or something like that but and then it could and then go long on uh, Tesla. Say, say, well, say, com- <laughs> say companies like um, that are specialising in in warfare. So, like, um, was it? Uh, Caterpillar. Yeah. No, well, which one's no, it? Caterp- Caterpillar is the industrial. But you uh, get you get the idea. Like, I um, forgot the name of it. Industrials and stuff like that. It could send some Lockheed. The Lockheed. Yeah, Lockheed Martin and, and those kinds of and B, BAE systems and those kind of companies. Um, and then it could send like some kind of threat to Russia or something like that or to North Korea or something like that and then create a sort of 
a bit of a drama between countries and nations and and then before you know it like obviously it would produce a massive return on the stock market and then you know because it it will use logic that is not human that's that's the thing is like it's unpredictable what it can do did you hear about the uh i can't remember exactly there's this case of uh there's ai weapons and they they uh i can't remember how it happened but eventually they, the ai turned the weapons onto the soldiers and killed the five of them instead because they said well this is the easy this is the best route to kill the least amount of people and blah 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 blah. But yeah, yeah, it, like, like it, it came up with its own it, yeah, rule it and uses, it figured out. It uses yeah, it uses its own like weird mm. weird computer rational not logic to Do come. You know up. what? It kind of reminds me of. I keep thinking of like you know like the genie from Aladdin. Yeah. So it's like all powerful can do whatever you want, but it's in like the person in charge is the person with the lamp, right? Yeah. So whether it wants to or not, if it gets in the hands of somebody with evil intentions, um, then it has to do that. If it gets the hand of some hand of somebody that just wants to right. fall in love with that girl, then it will do that. It's really like it has no choice, but it's all powerful yeah. at the same time. But I think Elon Musk with that point was actually making the point that even if it weren't designed seemingly for something harmful or if, even if you didn't prompt it to do something harmful it could actually result in an, a harmful an oops yeah like as in something that you don't predict the machine can do yeah but it will because it sees mm. that as the best solution yeah and all options are on the table like with a human there's certain things that we just wouldn't do even if it was the most efi efi efficient yeah. way to get what we wanted so um, that's just not a problem well, with Nazis anyone. were very efficient in how they did everything so yeah like, <laughs> like it's not, it's not going doesn't there. make it moral it might be a different one but it says um, an AI drone kills the human operator during it's a simulation yeah but it says the system started realising that while they did identify the threat at times the human operator would tell it not to kill the threat but it got its points by killing the threat so it killed the operator instead hmm that's the scary thing of like programming a machine to calculate things in a certain way like oh you'll get points if you do this and minus points if you do that and all of a sudden that becomes the entire world of that That's how it knows, machine yeah. in that moment and it's like people just don't work like that you know you can say to someone oh this is how you earn money and this is how you lose money but they still have human qualities to deter them from becoming completely yeah but unfortunately that's not really you that. can't really teach you can't really teach that okay. it's all done on a on a weighted it, it gives different things different numbers different weights different weights so it just based on that it and the training and everything it learns more and more and it that's it's the only way that it can do it it can't well, at the moment, anyway, you can't possibly have those feelings that that we would have. Mm. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it ever will. It won't have the feelings. That's a problem. That is <laughs> the problem. A, yeah, yes. big problem. We'll probably leave it there. There's too many to go through. Super intelligence, unforeseen consequences. Well, we've kind of covered that. The super intelligence is just like it's so intelligent that you can't, you couldn't predict what it could do. Mm. Like, so we're too will, stupid to understand yeah, yeah, we'll it. Yeah, <laughs> we will be too dumb, dumb to realise what what could what could occur, and that's not like a slight on our intelligence. It's just like the reality is, if, if you if it kept incrementally improving, imagine something with like a four thousand IQ. What would that even look like? It just be. That's what I'm saying. Once it starts um, communicating in a way that we can't understand anymore, then it's like. Okay. Past that point. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a nice, nice cheery, <laughs> cheery note to end the uh, end the conversation on. Um, do you want to sign us out? So that was about how uh, the human race will die out. <laughs> and, and, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time if we're still here. Yeah. Check back in ten years, and yeah, <laughs> we'll let you know. <laughs>